There are some really dramatic images of volcanoes from around the world. Sometimes they're throwing the contents of the volcano high into the air. Other times it can flow like a liquid down the sides of the volcano. It really depends on what's going on inside the volcano and then on how the contents interact with the surface world when it emerges. One of the strangest interactions in the world happens at the Kwaya Ijen volcano on the island of Java in Indonesia. The key element of this volcanic display is sulfur. Now sulfur is an element of the atomic number of 16 and it will readily form compounds with the majority of other elements. So in sulfur's pure state it's actually a bright yellow powder-like substance. The powder is actually a very fine crystal easily stick together form a much larger mass. One of the best known and easily recognisable forms of sulphur is hydrogen sulphide, a single sulphur atom with two hydrogen atoms attached to it. This hydrogen sulphide produces the classic and rather powerful rotten egg smell which is often associated with sulphur. Part of the reason why we find the smell of hydrogen sulphide so deeply unpleasant is it toxic even in relatively small levels. It can cause eye irritation or even eye damage. Slightly higher levels it can stop the sense of smell. And increasing levels it can even affect the central nervous system, shutting down breathing, resulting in death. And whilst these levels are relatively small, our sense of smell relating to hydrogen sulphide is so very acute, even the very presence of hydrogen sulphide in the vicinity will immediately be picked up by our sense of smell well before it gets near to the toxic levels. Unless the warning from our sense of smell is actually then ignored. Basically, the human sense of smell will alert us to the presence of hydrogen sulphide levels less than one thousandth of that needed to cause eye irritation. However, hydrogen sulphide isn't just toxic to humans, also to most other animals as well. It may even have been the driving force behind a mass extinction event over 200 million years ago. But, that being said, some bacteria can actually use hydrogen sulphide as actually an energy source. Sulphur itself is used both industrially and also within the human body and most other living cells need sulphur. Sulphur is an important in the structure of many proteins giving them kind of extra strength and rigidity. However, there's one particular sulphur bearing protein called theorodoxin which regulates virtually all life processes from photosynthesis in plants to growth in humans. Without this protein impossible for a human embryo to actually develop. As far as industrial uses go, it varies considerably due to its ability to form toxic mixtures. It can be used to kill bacteria, fungi, pests. On the other hand, it can be made into fertilizers and for pharmaceutical purposes. The base for common phosphate fertilizers comes from sulfuric acid, the most common industrial use of sulfur. Sulfuric acid can also be used in the production of paints, fibre, paper, it also plays an important role in metal processing, either in the manufacture of copper or zinc, or in the cleansing of colour steel cans before the coating of tin is actually applied. The actual number and uses is extensive, it probably take me all day to go through all them all. It leads us to the question, where do we actually then get the sulphur from to make all these uses items? And that brings us back to a volcano in Java. Now, sulfur is commonly extracted as a byproduct from fossil fuels, since sulfur, sulfur works are actually present in the living organisms when these deposits were actually formed. However, sulfur is also found deep within the earth and can be brought to the surface by volcanic activity. The sulfur that emerges from the volcano is normally in the form of hot gases. Now, many volcanoes emit carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. However, all of these gases, some volcanoes, like those in Java, also emit large quantities of hydrogen chloride, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. The Igen volcano is actually a group of volcanoes inside a much larger caldera. Like many volcanoes it has water in its crater, which is accumulated over time. However, the gas from the volcano is still emerging, some of which is entering the volcanic lake. Whilst more gas is being released from the cracks around the edge of the lake, all this has some rather dramatic effects on the local area. Now the first thing to notice is that the lake isn't as shining blue during the day. Instead, it's a rather green colour. This green isn't because it's teeming with life. Instead, over time, the hydrogen chloride gas from the volcano has turned the water 
in the lake into concentrated hydrochloric acid with a pH of around zero. Now, I did say the lake wasn't blue during the day. At night, the lake and surrounding area is a little bit of a different story. The gases that emerge from the vents by the side of the lake not only hot, but they also under considerable pressure. And where they make contact with the air on the surface, they can actually ignite. Some of the gases can also condense into liquid sulphur, burning a rather vivid shade of blue. In the daytime, this isn't that obvious, but at night, low lying clouds of ignited sulphur gas produce a rather spectacular display, resembling a bright blue lava billowing from the volcano as it moves down the slopes. Now, whilst the emerging gas can be an impressive sight, also being used for more practical purposes. By attaching a series of rudimentary ceramic pipes to where the gas is actually emerging from the volcanoes, locals can allow the gas time to cool, which rather than just creating liquid sulphur, can cool to form solid sulphur and in substantial quantities. Locals can then go down, collect baskets full of chunks of virtually pure yellow sulphur, and carry them a few miles where they can be sold for industrial uses. Now the conditions for collecting the sulphur, however, are rather dangerous. It isn't just the obvious problems with working in and around a volcano. The very gases which are actually producing the valuable sulphur for the workers to sell are also producing the toxic hydrogen sulphide gas, which means that workers have minimal protection equipment and have rather short lives. However, since the sulphur is fairly valuable, sulphur collecting is a relatively well-paid job in Java. There's still many people who collect it despite the risks that are involved in the collection of that sulphur.